the term virtual reality came to me when I was a teenager uh, growing up in southern New Mexico. I had been a really isolated and somewhat odd kid. My mom died when I was young, and I felt so separated from other people. And I, I had this dream from an early age of some way to share dreams with people, some way to find a commonality between these between people, despite these huge chasms of air between our heads. And um, I suddenly was just electrified with the idea of putting multiple people at once into these simulated worlds that they could invent. I was fascinated with the work of a man named Ivan Sutherland, who is the um, inventor of computer graphics, more or less, and the inventor of interactivity on a screen and many other things. He described something he called the ultimate display, which would be what we'd call a VR headset that would allow a person to have access to what he called a virtual world. The, the term virtual world actually came from art theory, believe it or not. I had spent a lot of time as a kid uh, obsessing over the artwork of Hieronymus Bosch and this amazing idea to depict a universe that's totally different from the actual one that we lived in. And I thought that this being able to do this in a sort of a dynamic way where you'd really be in it with other people could be this pathway to connection. I just had this intense feeling. And I thought that instead of calling that a virtual world, it should be called a virtual reality because it has multiple people. So virtual reality would be like the social version, the version where people turn into creatures and have bodies and see each other. From an early age, I was aware that there could be a terribly dark side to virtual reality, and I've, I've started to worry more about that because I, I think the internet as a whole has been quite dark lately, um, especially from a United States perspective since it's destabilized our, our country. And um, it's, it's terrifying. And um, what I realize is that whatever has happened with social media, whatever has happened with, uh, with the internet so far, we we at least have an opportunity to fix it while the technology is still rather crude. We, we must find a better way before virtual reality becomes more common because it's so intense. I've always had a feeling from a young age that if people, if mankind continues to pursue more and more technology with a sort of a mindset of just wanting more and more power, more and more capability, we'll eventually reach some situation where we destroy ourselves. I think almost everybody is really unhappy with how digital services are being used now. We've seen, seen this horrific destabilization of the world where uh, societies are torn apart. It, it's happening both in the wealthy world where you see America broken apart into people who don't even recognize each other. Um, we see it in the developing world. Uh, social media has played a, a role in the Rohingya crisis. It's played a role in destabilizing parts of India, parts of Africa. Um, so it's it's all over. And, and this is an awful thing. And I don't believe there's any one single magic solution that will solve all of this at once. But I do believe that there has to be a particular first step If we insist that everything online is free, we're telling these companies that the only business plan they have is what they call advertising. But the problem is it's not advertising anymore because they're measuring us so continuously and they're providing us with stimulus so continuously that it's more like a classic behaviorist experiment. It's become something so far beyond advertising and it's, um, it's unethical and it's not survivable. And if we're telling the companies that that's the only available business plan, then we're begging for our problems. Our responsibility is to design adventures of aesthetics and connection and meaning that are so profoundly beautiful that they seduce us out of mass suicide, you know? And, and so I, um, that might, <laughs> I even stumbled saying it because it's almost it almost feels taboo to say something that's that optimistic in, in this dark time, but I still think it's important to say it. <laughs>